Are you having trouble trying to figure out how to go about starting an oil painting and developing it? Well, I'm going to show you in this video. Stay tuned. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. We're going to be continuing with this piece. If you remember from last video, I was talking about how to do a block in, doing this whole segment here, and now we're going to start laying the other layers on. If you're new to my channel and watching for the first time, thank you for checking it out. And if you like what you see in this video, consider subscribing. And if you do so, hit that bell notification icon to be alerted as to when I post new videos. So let's get rolling and I'm going to show you the palette I'll be using for the uh, uh, layers that we'll be putting on top of this. So here's the palette I'm going to be using for the painting. And we have from left to right, we have the Flake White, French Ultramarine, Cobalt Blue, Cadmium Yellow, Cadmium Yellow Pale, Cadmium Red, and Cornacridone Red. I want, before we get started painting, I want to, I got to do a little correction here on some proportions. Uh, fortunately, a viewer reached out to me and mentioned about the size of the house back here and in relationship to scale and distance and uh, after reviewing the information and looking at my reference photo along with the painting there is a discrepancy here in the height of this house where it should be so we're going to fix that before we get started with the actual uh, local color paint layers and i'm going to show you how to do that this is the stage to catch it on because I've only got the block in tone here, so that's gonna help facilitate uh, making some changes. So we'll do that first, and uh, oh, let me show you the photo. Point this out to you here. You can see this peak of this house roof is lower than the top of this roof here. So of course it helps set, set it back further in space. So that's what we're gonna correct here. Now, if this happens to you, don't beat yourself up about it. It was funny when she pointed that out to me because I got to thinking, wow, sometimes we just get caught up in so many parts of our painting as we're working on other parts that even though we think, you know, we're doing the mirror, looking in reverse and all that sort of thing, there's still times you're gonna miss something and it happens, you know, nothing much you can do about it. So I'm gonna uh, mix up some paint here to, uh, work that size differently. Of course, everything else, the windows and all this area will have to be adjusted also. So now to mix up this, uh, I'm using the original uh, tone-in colors, which were Cornacodone Magenta and some Ultramarine Blue. And that's what I'm gonna to use to correct, to keep the same tone of the block end stage. And then I'll do all my corrections. And there are gonna be areas where we can start laying in local color here, but this is gonna be a process and I'll be doing a couple more videos probably on the completion of the painting. So when I do this today, I'll of course have to let that dry. I will be incorporating a little bit of liquid uh, as my medium to facilitate the drying. Now I've taped the picture adjacent to where I'm going to be working. Everything is dry here. So I just use a little bit of painter's tape, the low tack variety. So it's not going to harm anything under here and uh, that'll kind of keep it I have a quick reference. I don't have to turn too far away and then come back visually. And what I'm going to do is just dampen a filbert brush, Tuscan series, Utrecht. And uh, first thing I'm going to establish is the peak shape of the house in relation to how far down from this roof over here. Just want to establish, it actually falls quite low. I'm gonna bring this up close here. One thing I, I am gonna fib a bit because if you look at the photo, I'm gonna to try to zoom in here, where this line comes, there, it meets right at that eave of this foreground house. I wanna avoid that at all costs, no tangents. So I am gonna fib a little bit, make the house just a bit taller, but not as tall as it is. Uh, and what I might do to adjust that, instead of having to peak so um, even like this, I might drop it just a little bit to gain me that ability to raise this line up here, if that makes any sense. So sometimes we have to find those 
because the whole scene is what caught my eye, the whole bits of light and everything. So when you start analyzing, getting into the actual painting, you realize there's areas that are going to be problems and you have to make some uh, artistic decisions. So I want to house to start here. And, and there, so just create a new peak to the house. Okay, we're getting there, getting there. Just took a little bit of white with the mixture of the uh, block in tones to uh, obliterate a bit the old window positioning. And I'm liking where this is, uh, how it's looking right now. Now I'm just going to go over this area here, integrate it into the sky tone with some white and my Kernacridone magenta. Today's session will be, once we're starting the local colors, we'll be down in here, down in the bottom portion of the painting. So. And some of this will be the dark trees behind, so I don't want to go too far. There'll be trees behind there. And you're not going to get a total coverage because of the dark tone, but it will help you not get distracted a little bit by the old lines. And we can add another layer of this when this is dry, if we want to, but I think it'll be a good base tone probably when we go to put the blue sky in. We'll see once it dries and that sort of thing. Being careful not to go over my power pole. And see how this is starting to come into point with the uh, roof. You want to have overlaps. You want to go above and beyond a bit. So I'm going to just have a little offset to set off that pop of light. Bring this down a little bit. There, that's looking a little better in scale. Don't worry about the putting the chimney in later which will be a nice effect too, because there'll be a bit of rim lighting on this chimney now against those dark trees. That'll be kind of nice. Now I've mixed up a little bit of, I'm working, getting some tones of some grass in, and I'm mixing up the cadmium yellow pale and some cobalt blue. Just getting a base green, keeping it thin. Now you can, of course, paint more directly um, this, while this is pretty much the block in as a value painting, it's not an exact value. I didn't, I didn't spend a lot of time to get the values perfectly. I just wanted to get a sense of the shapes and how they're going to work in the composition. So you can do it more detailed. So thus, if you were to make a grisaille, basically, then you could take your color you mix and if it optically, if you plant it on the on this area and squint and it step away and squint a bit and it blends in, then you know you got a nice value. You got the proper value of color. I'm not looking to try to finish an area. I want to get a little bit of color all over the painting to have it start talking, have the components, the areas start talking to one another and see where I might push a color or not push a color because honestly photos, I just pretty much take the photos for the shapes and the patches of light. Then when I do it as a painting, then I'll, I'll make it more interesting. I'll push and pull some dark lights, that sort of thing. And I uh, highly suggest that. So that's what I'm doing just all over the painting and I'm going to start doing some more grassy areas. So I'll catch up to you. Okay, we've got a little hints of color going on here of the grass. Now I'm just going to mix up some darker tone of the cobalt and just a bit of cadmium red to neutralize. Okay, 
to get the shadow of the grass. Again, I'm not worried about perfection of shape yet. I just want to get a basic sense of light on the overall piece. And I'll resolve some of this because I do want to suggest the building edge and then maybe a tree's poking out on the other side of the uh, building here. And this area up into here will start to have like the cast shadow from the leaves on the tree. So in anticipation of that, I'll build this out a little more here. Kind of just dabbing the paint on, scumbling the paint. Just using the cobalt blue. Just scumbling the paint on. As the painting, uh, as I build the layers, then I'll start uh, getting more uh, controlled brush work and that sort of thing. This is just, it's gonna keep supplying a base to build on. Now I'm gonna just get a base tone of these lighter trees. There's behind this roof here, mixing in the cad yellow pale. I'm going to use a little bit of ultramarine blue because you don't want to make all your greens the same, but you also don't want to have different green here, different green, different uh, you know all kinds of different greens either. You want to find a balance. You want to, in some ways, in some green areas, compress the greens together and find an average value because you don't want to detract from your big shapes here. You just want to have, you want some realism, but you also want a balance of uh, playing down certain parts and not making them too dissimilar in the value of the green and the color. And sometimes if you're not sure yet when you're starting a painting like I am now, it might seem like a little bit of a too bright of a green, but I'm leaving it for right now because I can always neutralize it more later. If I feel once I have other colors coming along, I can play down the vibrancy of the green with adding some red into some more green and, and neutralizing it a bit. Added a little red in there in this area just to add a subtle variation in green. And don't worry about going over your edge here a bit because you're going to reinforce that later anyway. And let it just drift off into this mixture we already did. Let it intermix a bit. Is that good for now? And now we'll work on getting some darks over here. Now I'm going to put some darks over here. Some darker greens. We can clean up that roof line there. Don't worry about that. Just scumbling over. Now this foreground is going to be the deepest, darkest. So... We want to preserve, not go too super dark in the back here. And once I establish this very dark green shape in shadow, even though this is in shadow back here also, it's getting a little more light. This is closer to the viewer, not catching as much. So. I'm going to mix up some dark green and then we'll uh, get working over here. Now, as you saw in the uh, palette in the beginning of the video, I'm using a warm and cool of each of the primaries and then, of course, the white. And what I'm using for the deep dark color right now, which uh, I might do another version of a dark also to put that over that later when uh, the base layer dries to give a little vibration and little subtle color differences within dark shape rather than just a flat dark shape which would be very boring and i'm using ultramarine blue some cad yellow uh, regular not the pale and then some uh, cronacodone red and i'm just kind of going to get a base layer on get that richness down that deep shadow 
just going over the previous dark shapes I made. You don't have to be exacting. You can get exacting with a smaller brush. Preserving the, the pole. I'm not painting over the pole, of course. And what I'll do sometimes when I, when I do some uh, base layers and, and let them dry, I'll sometimes take the, the painting into a different part of the house or whatever to judge where it might need to be pushed more. Because obviously in the studio we have uh, extreme lighting that is not a common thing in, of course, households. Galleries would light it with special lighting. And it's really important to try to find that happy medium place for because the paintings are going to really, if they're purchased by somebody, are going to live in a regular household with light that's not always the greatest. So something to keep in mind. Uh, we do the best we can to make the painting look as good as it can. Now I'm going to work on some tones, just get some base elements in here for the shadow in the road using some uh, ultramarine blue, a little bit of cat red and uh, a little bit of yellow. Try to get a grayish, more uh, neutralized bit of uh, tone for the shadow on the roads. Okay, I've mixed up a uh, little bit of the uh, ultramarine blue, cad red, and just a touch of some yellow. And I'm just gonna start scumbling that, knocking off some of the paint off on a paper towel Just suggestive at this point. This is a build-up sort of process. And this is where I'm going to start suggesting the shadows of the leaves around the edge of the building. Keeping some strokes as directional as I can. I'll have a few cross strokes, but not many. I'm going to get a little bigger brush and then work in the base tone of this. And then uh, with the uh, filbert right here, I'm, I'll uh, add in a little variation of color. I'm just using this one inch brush, house painter brush from Home Depot. Just paints thin a little bit with a tad of terps and some liquid. Using ultramarine blue, a little bit of cat red, a little bit of conacodone red, get a cool tone. Then we'll let this dry and then I'll go over this again. Just to have a little color variation, a little warmth and cool variation. Let it integrate because it's thin with the edge of the grass area, so there's no super hard edges at this point still. This will add some nice texture to the piece too, even though it's not thick paint, just having a little bit of that pink tone showing through in parts. Step back. Liking that. Now I'm going to reiterate some of the uh, highlights on the sidewalk and such. And in the area here, I've started to break up some of the lines here just to start the suggestive pattern of the shadow on the ground. Now something to watch for is when shadows are falling, you want to pay attention to the edges of the shadows where they hits the ground into the light. Depending on how far away an object is will de determine how hard edge a shadow is. So some objects, you may have trees here, a building here, and then something else here. And as those are casting shadows, you know, this tree that's furthest away from where the shadow is going to fall is going to have some softer edges. So things to think about and observe that in nature when you're in a neighborhood and, and you see the uh, shadows on the road or on a house and that sort of thing. 
So something that can be useful to give some real, realism to a scene. One thing I'm going to have to do, which I haven't placed yet, is a driveway for this house. So I'm going to investigate the uh, reference photo and uh, it's probably going to go in here somewhere. We'll see. I've kind of cut in a driveway over here and of course uh, we're going to have to let the paint dry to uh, facilitate putting some more layers on so we'll work on that at a later time. I'm going to start getting some tones of the shadow side of the houses in and uh, get that rolling. And uh, you know this happens in the reference photo this driveway is not here but I think it feeds in nicely with the composition of painting. I'm essentially kind of making my own reality in a way and because uh, it's really not about XYZ Street it's really about the light hitting a building and everything feeding into that idea. Okay we're going to be starting this session in voiceover because I went to lunch and came back and forgot to turn my microphone back on so I apologize for that so if you see my mouth moving obviously it wasn't catching audio. So now I'm just blocking in the shadow side of the buildings and uh, using a mixture of ultramarine blue, sometimes cobalt blue, and the cool red, quinacridone red, and sometimes a little bit of the cad red, add some variation in the temperatures of the shadow. Now I'm still using my bristle brushes at this stage. Um, very handy for, of course, not to, for having the capacity as a workhorse to take the abuse against the canvas. And as we get into the final layers is when I'll incorporate some softer hair brushes. And over here on the right you can see as I was adjusting previously in the previous video that vertical line was part of a house that was in the scene that was just a, in too little of it to make sense. So I was painting over it with the uh, shadow color just getting some base tones and I'll be scumbling even some more variations of temperature and tone over these later on in future layers. Now this whole process I'm doing with this painting I don't do necessarily on every painting. I just wanted to kind of experiment once in a while and go through the process and I thought it'd be interesting for this painting to share it with you, uh, you guys out there and give you some ideas of how to progress with the painting. I typically, especially my plein air work, you know, it's all kind of once one or two sittings, getting that uh, emotion and energy in, in the paint layers. This is a little more controlled version of uh, trying to develop a painting in a more controlled fashion for the people out there that don't feel as confident in their uh, applying their paint strokes. So it gives them some opportunities to really think it through. Now, as you can see uh, from the previous in the beginning of the video when I adjusted that house, now I'm just kind of touching up, readjusting the window sizes and moving them a little bit, cutting around. Now here, in this area, this is uh, in the photo some lattice work that is on the uh, house. And right now what I'm doing is putting in a base tone of the dark that's going to be behind the uh, vertical and horizontal little lattice strips. I of course did not want to paint those first and work in painting little dark squares so I'm doing a base tone of the background first and I'll layer the uh, strokes of the lattice work later on trying to be a little uh, suggestive not too architectural about the rendering of them. Now here's a nice little technique. I'm, the, the lattice comes in sections and as a construction of a house you want to make sure that's pretty exact. Uh, you're not going to have one section two feet, another section three feet. You know there's some common sense to building and I've, I'm measuring and dividing up the space accordingly. And I struck my first line to the right there because I did not want to end up with marking that, that line I'm getting ready to mark and then uh, set a, a distance I want and it reach the edge of the canvas and be in an awkward position. So I wanted to position the other one first and create the section uh, width if that makes any sense. But And then I just wipe out the vertical cross pieces of wood that would make up the sections using a little bit of turpentine to wipe out the thin paint. Works really good. You wipe it out, uh, wipe once, dab on a paper towel, wipe again like I am right there 
and takes off the excess dark paint and it's a good way to form some shapes and uh, get that in there. Now I'm working on suggesting uh, looking up my reference photo of my hand just getting some ideas of what kind of shapes are in the window reflections and getting those in there. They're not going to be super exact at this stage but they definitely will be useful and I may later on as the whole painting is crystallizing I may simplify some shapes in a window that'll be decided later on and uh, it's going to be cool to, to really kind of study and see what you can see into the window like say a lampshade or something and then what's reflected and that's what's interesting about windows and reflections in general adds interest too to rather than just make a dark shape for a window which would be quite boring but on the flip side sometimes you don't want it too busy so that'll be the challenge going forward just getting some hints of light bouncing from reflected areas and things you might see inside as the light is coming from the left across into the windows and striking the interior wall of the porch there. It's as if you're making a small abstract painting if you think of it that way and then you step back and look at it. Now on that house that I'm working on right now it's really uh, pronounced because the window's light, light is coming through the window on the left facing the sun, that bottom section that I'm getting ready to paint now is going to be a strong sunlit uh, light on the interior wall. And that's going to be pretty cool in the, if, when I finesse that in the uh, as I get towards the end of the painting. Now creating the vertical windows, because there's like uh, three or four windows here on the side, I always paint the dark shape first and I can pull out the light tones afterward, either with my turpentine a uh, little technique I used in the skirting there before or I can just put some wet white paint over uh, the dark shape and then build on it later on when it dries. Establishing some darks in the power pole and of course I will be putting power lines in later and I don't want to get caught up in painting around those uh, little lines now so and I'm not going to put in every power line that I saw but be a little more suggestive. I don't want to break up some nice shapes. And getting some variation, the, the power poles actually have two different colors. The one in the background is a little more grayish, cool blue. And this one has some variations of uh, kind of some nice reddish sienna kind of tones mixed with like some yellow ochre type tones. So it's uh, going to be fun to play around with that to add some interest. So just working now on getting some darks too. I'll be working on getting shadow side, just a subtle shadow side, even though it's not in strong sunlight in the final rendition. You do want to have some form, some roundness to the pole. As you can see here, I'm going to start with that just a little bit. Might be hard to see super detail, but now just uh, working on, like I was mentioning before, the previous uh, photo, the uh, that I took, the value of that roof, it was like an aluminum roof, was the same value as the uh, sunlit side of the house, so I'm changing it to make it more of like a shingled type roof, and just getting some base tones of the light on that, which be careful in uh, when you have a dark shape in sun, it's still going to be fairly dark in value, so don't make it too light. Now I'm working on getting the shadow side of the other house there using a little variation, more of a grayish, warmish tone to have a little variety. I don't want the same as what I just did, so it's something to think about also. And then again, putting a mid-value highlight because it is a dark color in sunlight. Now putting a base tone, a, a little darker base tone over that deeper purple that I uh, mentioned I was going to change. And as I'm painting this, I'm not trying to obliterate that original tone of purple. I want to have some of that scumbling showing through to have variety and make it a little more interesting to look at. And then as I build and scumble more layers over that, uh, I, I will end up 
painting the detail without painting the detail, if that makes sense. It just gives it a little more ethereal quality to the color. Establishing a little stronger line, still not, if you look up close to the painting, not super hard edged. Building, just start to dance around the painting and build some little details that need to be in there for the next stages of the painting. And I plan on doing one or two more videos on this. I'm not going to show the whole exact process because it's going to take a while and I don't want to bore everyone with maybe 10 videos on this, but it really gives you some ideas of how you might tackle a subject such as this. Just touching up a few things over other parts of the painting that I've been wanting you know, to adjust. And I am thinking about adjusting some shadows on the roadway. So that'll be in the next session. So you can see it's just a little bit of a process, you know, and that's how it uh, is going to go in your painting. Not everything might not be super crystallized for you, but uh, you can make adjustments as you go along. Now I'm just working on getting some little stronger pops of highlight on the grass, a little more decisive strokes. And uh, as you can see there, that's a really nice sort of start to build the interest, so to speak. And there's still a stop sign I'm going to be putting in, so that's going to be a nice pop of a color that's going to be by that power pole kind of in the center of the painting. Now just kind of given some everyday things you see in neighborhoods, a little cheap stockade fence. That'll be uh, in the final painting as that gets developed. So that'll be interesting to uh, build on. And of course I have the car to uh, do in the next session also. Not sure what style car. It's not going to be too exacting, just an automobile. Again, just working around a painting, pulling out certain elements that I'll be building on later. The little bit of sidewalk. And on the right hand sidewalk, I will be putting a curb in there. Obviously, it has a curb. I have a little suggestion on one, but the shadows need to climb up that curb and over. So I'll have to get some structural things going on there, and I'll work on that in the next session. Okay, so that's it for now, and until next time. So we're going to call for this session. I think it's coming along pretty good. Still a lot of work to do, but thanks for joining me. And again, if you uh, were new to the channel and you enjoyed what you saw, uh, consider subscribing. For everyone else, thank you for continuing to watch my videos, and check me out on Facebook at Habowski Studio, and on Instagram at Habowski Studio. Till next time, bye.